In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Last week was Peter's moment of great triumph. He cooperated with God and understood the truth about Jesus. Remember how I said how it showed the contrast between public opinion and what God reveals. Remember how truth about God and what's right and wrong never comes through surveying the culture and what it currently values. But we get at the truth by paying attention to what God has revealed. Because God's truth doesn't change. It's true irrespective of society. But what happens next? Straight after that Jesus praises Peter and makes him the, the prime minister, the first pope, the very next sentence, Peter messes up. And Jesus really has to put him in his place. Get behind me, Satan. Your thinking is so far from God's. Last week, Jesus said Peter was in tune with God and God's thinking. This week, he's in tune with the devil. What a switch. What went wrong? Jesus has told the disciples that his mission is going to lead to his suffering and his death. And then we read that Peter started to remonstrate with Jesus. This must not happen. Instead of accepting what God reveals, Peter wants to change it, to override it. Peter has decided for himself what God's plan has to be and what it can't possibly be. God's plan cannot be one of suffering and failure and humiliation. This isn't a mistake about who Jesus is. Peter knows he's God and that he is the promised Messiah. He said that last week. So it's not Peter getting a doctrine wrong, but it's more about Peter wanting to put limits on God's plans for his future uh, and, and, and his plans in general um, for salvation. It's telling God what the deal is going to be. And this is where I guess the gospel can really be relevant to us and to me, you know. Have you ever found yourself thinking, um, why is God, um, why everything in yourself I'm, God, you cannot let this happen to me. You know, when you're faced with some future uncertainty. God, you cannot let this happen to me. Um, giving God a terms of contract about what his side of the bargain has to be. Um, I'm going to be at Mass every Sunday. I'm going to pray, but, you know, you keep out with those things, those disasters, those illnesses, or those difficulties the exam failure or something. Um, but the uncomfortable truth of the gospel today is no matter how holy you are, even if you're the Pope, like St. Peter, God can and might do things that you are not expecting that are so far from what your own plans might have been uh, if you were deciding the trajectory of your life. And like I said, I think it's easy to think of or... or, or subtly to think of practicing your faith as a kind of insurance policy that you're doing your payments um, by practicing your faith and that means you know even if something happens that, that's unpredicted you'll be back on the road soon and uh, nothing major will, will uh, you know will upset you in life um, you'll get a replacement car or something like with insurance payments but mass and the sacraments aren't like that or even worse, you might even see practicing your faith as some kind of protection money to keep the local mob leader off your back and out of your life. Don't interrupt me, God. I'm doing well with things. I have my plan for my life all set. But ultimately, Peter is being taught that practicing his faith, being a disciple of Christ... Um, it's about getting the graces to confront whatever comes to you in life 
and to transform whatever it might be into something beautiful for God. And that's a particular um, image that St. Ignatius of Loyola likes to use in his spiritual exercises. He says that we need to foster a holy indifference to all that comes to us, all that might come to us rather, an indifference about all that might come to me in the future, knowing that whatever might come to me, it can be used for God's glory. If I have the right attitude, if I approach it with, with uh, the attitude of our Lord, uh, as a tr- uh, with our Lord by my side, as a true disciple. One uh, metaphor Ignatius likes to use is the stuff that comes to you in life is just like different color paint and um, different color pigments. And by cooperating with the grace of God, we can use whatever paint we might get to make our lives a masterpiece to God's glory. We might think then in the gospel that Peter just looked at the paint that was given to him and decided, nah, this color can't be used. Um, I don't see how that's going to work out. But a living Catholic faith answers, I trust that God knows what he's doing and that as more colours get given to me, a final beautiful design is going to emerge. Not one I'm expecting, uh, but something amazing for God is going to come about. It's not easy. No one wants the cross from a human point of view. Our bodies, our lives, we crave comfort and stability. But ultimately, realistically speaking, all our stories do lead to the cross. The challenge isn't about avoiding the cross. That's actually impossible. The challenge and what Jesus offers us is to go with him, uh, to carry the cross alongside him. As he says in the gospel, take up your cross and follow me. Because when you go with the Lord, and only when you go with the Lord, does that cross lead to the resurrection. At every Holy Mass, actually, we have an opportunity every week to unite our little crosses with his and to be um, given the grace to go alongside him and to continue following him for the next week, not paying too much attention to what's going to lie ahead or what might lie ahead, but more the companionship that he's offering us in this moment, because it's his companionship that makes the journey bearable and the the final destination awesome and amazing. Okay, to conclude, Peter messes up by wanting to set boundaries on what the will of God is going to be. He insists things have to pan out just as the way he wants it. Our Lord challenges him and he challenges us. God's will might be quite different from the way you may have designed your future. But what we can be certain about, and what makes all the difference, is walking in faith, knowing that as long as I remain in God's friendship, everything that comes at me can be used to his glory, and that every cross will lead to resurrection. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.